Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're gonna talk about how to gain confidence in the kitchen as a cook. And I am saying for like, just heads up from the very beginning, from the very get go, if you are a trained chef, or like are in any way like really good at any of this, this is not the video for you, okay? I am not here to teach you knife skills, because I don't have any of those. There are plenty of videos also that exist on the internet to figure out the beginning steps for like how to do the professional side of cooking. What I'm talking about is learning how to cook with confidence. This whole video was inspired recently by a girlfriend of mine who jumped on Instagram and was like, how do I cook? And I was like, what? She goes, yes, internet, how do I cook? And I was like, I don't understand what that means. What do you mean, how do you cook? How do you not know this? And I realized that maybe not everyone out there knows how to do this. And I've been wonderfully fortunate to have a mom who is incredible at all this, has taught me all of her tips and tricks that I've either completely stolen from her or come up with my own along the way. So this is for any sort of beginner who's like, I don't care how to mince garlic. I don't even know what mince means. Like I, I'm, I don't even cook anything. And I think that boxed mac and cheese is about as gourmet as I will ever get. First of all, not knocking boxed mac and cheese. I have several boxes of it in my pantry right now, okay? So that's, well, let's start there. Second of all, sometimes you just need a place to go to where it's like not some bougie professional teaching you how to do this, but someone who's maybe only a couple steps ahead of you who, to like help you out. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. So returning back to that earlier story, this girlfriend of mine jumped to the internet. She's like, literally all I know is hamburger helper. Or I just cooked it for, for the first time a couple nights ago. It was super easy. That's it. That's my skill set. That's the limitations of it. And immediately I was like, yes, that's it. That's where you start. Start with what's already in your pantry. If that means that it's hamburger helper, fantastic. In fact, I'm gonna be using it as a reference for the entirety of this video. In order to gain confidence in the kitchen, you gotta start somewhere. You have to master something. And I love the hamburger helper as an example because you gotta cook one thing correctly, and that's the ground beef, right? If you can master the ground beef and then you mix all the fixins together, right? Like you can make the pasta and everything, and you can get it all together. They're very clear instructions. It's a tried and true recipe. They've been around for decades. Once you feel like you have mastered that one protein or that one element, then you will feel so much more encouraged and equipped to try something different. Like maybe doing a meat sauce for pasta night or ground beef for tacos. Now that you've mastered cooking that one specific thing, so many different recipes can be built off that one specific element. Start with what you already know, what you're already buying, and then just keep doing it until you feel good about it. In addition to that, don't stray outside of your pantry. If a recipe calls for an ingredient that you don't typically carry or have inside your house, I would suggest staying away from it in the early phases until you feel a little bit more confident, especially if it's got like a list of five to 10 things that you don't even know how to pronounce, much less ever seen before. You're gonna wanna stray away from anything like that until you've gotten a little bit further in your cooking journey so you're not stressing yourself out and therefore scaring yourself out of the kitchen. I kinda see this as the whole like love, love em or hate em, the Dave Ramsey effect when it comes to like paying off debts, the snowball effect. Start with something small and simple and master it so that you feel like a boss you know, because he recommends starting with the smallest debts, and then you can work your way forward. Do not start with a bunch of ingredients you don't understand, with a bunch of steps, with a really complicated recipe. Start with Hamburger Helper, all right? Start in this happy little home, get your ground beef down, and then move forward. Step number two, plan ahead. And this is where, for years, I got this totally wrong, completely wrong. I will be the first to admit it. Especially if you're in the beginning stages, you have to have a recipe that you're following, okay? You need to have something looked up ahead of time. Don't, don't just pluck an idea out of the atmosphere and go, hey, stroganoff sounds good. Let's see if I can make this work. No, no, we're gonna start with the recipe, okay? We're gonna start with a solid foundation with a recipe that's got great reviews to it. Maybe you read through a few of them until you feel a little bit more confident about what the recipe is telling you to make. If you're anything like me, you're also gonna wanna have that recipe handy throughout your entire cooking time. So that could be on your phone, on a tablet, in a cookbook, maybe you wanna have it printed up. Something physical that you can refer to when inevitably about 20 minutes into this, you start panicking and thinking that you've forgotten absolutely everything. There's also a benefit of this, of having a recipe printed out physically in front of you, and that is you can save it if it goes well. You could also burn it if it doesn't, all right? So just making sure you have something, you can take note. The physical copy is so helpful. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've made a recipe off of the internet. Absolutely loved it, only to later go, I forgot what link I clicked, and I don't know where that one came from. So if and whenever possible, print that puppy out. Also, when it comes to these recipes, make sure you're going to a trusted resource. Not that I'm knocking the mommy blogger that has like 3,000 words before you even get to the actual recipe, but when you're just getting started, you're going to wanna make sure that you're getting your recipes from a place that is either highly reviewed or highly tested. My top two favorite places to get recipes Number one, allrecipes.com. It's also an app that you can download on your phone. I absolutely love this. I've literally been using this for 
darn near a decade, if I do dare say that out loud. It's a really great app where you can actually either search by ingredient or cook time with a really cool dinner spinner function. Don't recommend starting with that though if you're just getting started or searching for specific recipes. I have found my favorite chicken pot pie, my favorite stir fry, some really great tips to up my meatloaf game, literally one of the greatest places that you can go get your recipes, specifically because of the review system. So some people hate them. I personally love it where I look at a recipe and then I go immediately to read the reviews to see all the revisions that people made. Now for some that may still feel pretty overwhelming. If you're like, great, I have to look at recipe and then read the reviews to like add to or take away from the recipe. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you about my second favorite resource, which is America's Test Kitchen. And when I tell you it's my favorite resource, okay, it's probably actually my first favorite resource, more so than all recipes. I just, when I tell you it's my favorite. I, how many, I have four of their cookbooks, which in my opinion is not enough. So America's Test Kitchen is actually, I don't know if it started as a show on PBS or it started as cookbooks, but it's actually a test kitchen where they go through all of these recipes. So what I love about these in particular, this one's fantastic, especially for newlyweds. I know so many of my followers are coming from my main channel. I'm a wedding planner. And now we're married and are like, oh great, we have to figure out how to cook for each other. This is hands down going to be one of the best resources you can look into. Not only does it change the serving sizes for the recipes, but also takes into account adjusted cook times for using smaller amounts, as opposed to some of these other books and other recipes that are for anywhere from four to eight people, which tends to seem like a lot, it's a lot of mental math for you. So if you are one of my newly aware friends, check this one out, I will link it down below for you. And then there's an international version, my cousin actually gave this one to me. She's a dessert table baker by trade. I went to culinary art school, so I trust her taste. She's the one who turned me on to these. I trust her taste in cookbooks completely. And here's a fantastic example of why I love them. On the screen in front of you, you will see Vegetable Cookery 101. It says the type of vegetable, the amount or yield, how you should prepare it, the boiling time, the steaming time, and the microwaving time. And every couple of pages or so, you will see a highlighted section that says Test Kitchen Tip. They have gone through and tried these recipes over and over and over again to really perfect the best way of making this happen so you don't have to. So if you want something foolproof and easy to understand, I cannot recommend the America's Test Kitchen cookbooks enough. This is, look at how destroyed this one is. If I could show you the stains on the pages of this one. This I gave to my husband five years ago and to this day is one of our most used cookbooks in the kitchen. It also recommends a lot of utensils and cookware that you could be using and they give you both a budget option and a more high-end option because not only have they tested out the recipes but they've tested out all the tools as well. So this is not, this is not an ad for ATK but I'm literally obsessed. If you have access to PBS, go watch their shows. It's a little, a little cheesy, okay? Just gonna say that, but it'll make you feel really good, like you know what you're doing, and then you get the cookbooks with all the extra notes and the amount of times that they tested these recipes and you're gonna feel like a boss. Once you have the recipe picked out, put together your mise en plots which I didn't know what that was until my cousin told me. So, you know, I'm actually really not that fancy. That means everything in its place or stuff in place. Get out all the ingredients for your recipe before you start cooking. I wish I learned this lesson earlier. <laughs> I did not always do this one right. I hope, and to this day, sometimes I'll still be panicking, running around, grabbing things out of the cupboard or out of the refrigerator. But now I feel a lot more confident, one, because I know I already have these things because I'm cooking with them all the time, and two, because I generally know the pacing of how some recipes work, so I feel a little better. If you're new to this, get your stuff out first. Cut your onions before you start cooking. Make sure your chicken is prepped before you start cooking. Get all of that prep work done before you even start your recipe because if you get started, if you press play and start hitting the road and your stuff is not ready, I don't know about you, but that's when I've started to feel super frazzled and then the recipe kind of gets away from me and then it, I feel like a failure the entire time, like I'm trying to play catch up. And it's not fun for anyone to, <laughs> to watch, to witness, to be around, get your stuff ready beforehand. It's also a great way of double checking that you have all the ingredients just in case. Tip number three, cheat. Cheat, all day. You don't have to buy all fresh ingredients. One of my favorite things in my pantry, hold on, I'm gonna go get it. Pre-chopped or pre-minced garlic. Is it the freshest thing you've ever had in your life? No, does it get the job done? Yes, and once you've opened it, you can just toss it in your fridge and use it every time you need chopped or minced garlic for a recipe. This is kind of stuff is so helpful, especially when you're first getting started because it takes one task item off your list. You don't have to chop garlic anywhere, which personally I hate doing because it makes your fingers all sticky. Another fantastic way that you can cheat is using canned or frozen vegetables instead of fresh, like using microwave rice instead of cooking it from scratch. 
using jarred sauce or a sauce packet like this. My husband, for some reason, is literally obsessed with these. Now, while I've repeatedly teased his need to have like literally every single spice and sauce packet they offer on the spice aisle at HEB, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it comes in handy. This could also be jarred pasta sauce. Don't feel like you have to cook it from scratch. Another great way of cheating is to cook pasta, cook the sauce, put together a bagged salad on the side, and throw some garlic bread in the oven. Every single thing, you didn't prepare a single one of them from scratch. You cheated on every single element of that meal, but guess what? You have a meal with salad, pasta, sauce, and fresh bread straight from the oven from your local grocery store to really reinforce that confidence that we're looking for. And maybe in time you could step it up and start to make your own sauce. But until then, keep using the cheater way. Oh, I almost forgot my favorite cheater hack of all time, rotisserie chickens. Do you know the amount of years that I've used rotisserie chickens in place of like buying raw chicken and cooking it for dishes? I've used it in chicken pot pie. I've used it in chicken enchiladas. I've used it in soups. I've used it in, I can't even tell you how many things I've used rotisserie chicken in. You just take the meat off the bone and then boom, you've got really tasty chicken already done for you. We're building your confidence skill in another area like making sure the soup comes out tasting good and you don't have to worry about the protein specifically. We'll figure that part out later, you know? And then I like to use leftover bones to create stock out of later. I've talked about it here on this channel before. I call it scrap stock where literally I take the trash from like root vegetables and chicken and then make it into stock. I did a whole video on like my kitchen staples and I actually made stock in it. I'll go and link it right here if you guys wanna check that out. There's absolutely no shame in cheating in as many ways as possible when it comes to getting confidence in the kitchen. And last but most certainly not least, have realistic expectations, all right? We're starting small, we're mastering a protein, we're working with you, what you already have in your pantry. We're making sure you have your recipe picked out from a tried and true source, maybe read reviews or gone with the test kitchen style. We're getting all the ingredients ready beforehand. We're cheating where we can, but we still need to have realistic expectations about what you can make and what you can do with the time frame you've given yourself. And while I've been making home cooked meals for well over a decade now, I'm still shocked by how much time it takes. If a recipe tells you it takes 30 minutes, give yourself 45 to 60. Turn it into a treat-like experience. Put on a cute apron, pour yourself a glass of wine if you feel so inclined. Put on some jazzy music to just make you get in the headspace. There's something about an apron and a glass of wine and music that I'm like, this is a vibe, this is a moment, and I am enjoying everything about this. So then it kind of turns into like a cooking therapy of sorts, for me at least. If it's a new recipe, give yourself more time. If it includes a new skill set or cooking a new protein or adding a new side that you haven't worked with before, give yourself more time. I rarely, if ever, go off of the prep time and cook time that they suggest because for some reason, I cannot manage to get my stuff together to ever get it completed in a timely manner. So like, just pretend like the time frame lies, okay? <laughs> give, yourself, give yourself ample time on top of that. And lastly, give yourself some grace you're probably gonna screw up, okay? Getting experience in the kitchen is literally trial and error. You're going to have some recipes that suck. And I'm so sorry to have to tell you that in a whole video where I'm trying to boost up your confidence, but just have realistic expectations. Keep trying, keep it simple in the beginning and grow with your skill set. There is such a beauty to home cooked meals and I'm a total cheese ball for them. It also can save you money, be a lot healthier and really bring you guys together even closer when you have the opportunity to share a meal over a table or at a coffee table in front of a show. I'm not here to judge. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, jump on down there, hit that like button. I know some of this feels probably ridiculously obvious to some of you, but to other people, this is brand new information. And if I didn't have my mom teaching me some of these things, or if I didn't blunder my way through them throughout my early adulthood, I wouldn't have known them either. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Hopefully it encourages you to enjoy your time in the kitchen. And hopefully it encourages you to keep going, keep trying. Check out the resources I have linked for you down below. And if you have a cooking tip that either you stumbled across or someone has really kindly shared with you, drop those in the comments below. Let's help each other out. If you're watching this video, you want to feel better in the kitchen, let's be as encouraging as possible in the comment section, shall we? And until next week, bye guys.